Alright, what is up YouTube? We are back, and as you can probably tell from the title of this video, we finally have the long-awaited results of the Mills versus Athena side-by-side -side grow. So, who won? Who lost? Was it a tie? What happened? So, I've been waiting this for a while. I just got the results today, so I'm very excited. I'm a bit of a mess just came from the gym. Just I don't want to wait to get it. Today's Friday, so I'm doing this right now. So, before we get into that, though, and we cover the nutrient side-by-side -side brand, does the nutrient brand matter? The flush side-by-side -side that we did as well with that. You know, what are the weights? What are the cannabinoids? What's the THC? What's the terpenes? What's everything, right? What, you know, did flushing affect heavy metals as we were told or as I was told? So we'll get on, we'll get into all of that in a second. But before we get into that, I did want to talk about the video that I'm going to be doing next after this. So as you guys know, between this girl and the last girl, I made a huge difference in my PPFD. I pushed PPFD pretty hard. Last one we topped out at 1600, stressed the plants out a bit. This one we stopped at about 1350 and dropped a little sooner. We also got a little colder because of the new AC. How did that affect harvest? How did that affect you know your yield, your potency, all that stuff? And you know, is it true that if you get high yields, you have low potency? You know, if you have pounds and pounds and you just grow in mids, is that true? You know, where does all that lie? So we're gonna cover that. We're gonna have data to back it up. So we're gonna do that next video. So stay tuned. But to stay on topic and to stay into this video, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna find out the long-awaited answer we've been waiting months for. Um, before I do that, I do want to give a special shout out to Brandon and Henry from Athena. Uh, they actually made all the testing possible. He talked to me. He said he was very interested in my grow. And this is after the grow's already been done. And it was uh, about to, you know, get chopped. And I told, him I, was, I told him all the testing I wanted to do. And as I said, I wasn't sure if funds would allow. He said, you know what? We'll cover it under one condition. I'm like, well, what's the condition? He said, as long as you're truthful, even if we lose, we want you to say the truth and give it out there. He's like, that's the only thing. He's like, and we want the truth as well because that shows us where areas we can improve in. So shout out to them. I thought that was a very mature way of doing it. I think that's very commendable as a company, not only to cover my stuff, so thank you. So it's not cheap, a couple grand easily. But so to get into the test results, I have about 16 pages worth of test results. So instead of going through all 16 pages, what I did and with my nerdy self is I used Excel, put it all down into a little table and then made a little uh, pivot table off that to just kind of nicely condense all the information we and that's just what I do for a day job So that's why I got into it. But before I give you those pop-ups Don't worry all of the test results as well as these spreadsheets and everything are all gonna be available on my Instagram I'll leave a link in the description as you know, it's at try underscore state underscore try combs It'll all be on there But I wanted to release all the information here first so that everyone from YouTube gets it before Instagram uh, but it will be on there a few days after this gets uploaded. I just got to take out all the personal details and stuff like that, you know, black it out or whatever it is. So, but to get into it, before I show the uh, testing, I put everything into a table. I took all the most pertinent information. So we're going to have uh, in columns, column one is going to be our nutrient brand, Mills or Athena, obviously. Column two, we're going to have our cultivar or known as a strain. Technically, cultivar is the correct way to say it, but I mean, strain's out of habit by now. So we have our nutrient brand, we're gonna have our cultivar. We're gonna have, was it flushed or was it not flushed? Cause we need to see if this makes a difference to anything. And then after that, we're gonna have our data. We're gonna have our total cannabinoid content, our total THC percentage, our uh, terpene percentage, and whether or not there was any trace metals uh, in there because as I was told, trace metals could be found when you don't flush. So I'm like, we need to find out if this is true and I need to know. So to get into that, I'm gonna be looking at my screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop up First of all, the table that I've talked about, put it over my face so I can look at it. As you guys can tell here, going left from right, the ones that I listed, we have the nutrient brands, cultivars, flushing, cannabinoids, THC, terpenes, and heavy metals. Getting into this looks like a big mess of numbers. Now you all know it's a giant red line in the middle, and that's because that test came back a little faulty. I don't know what was going on, but all the percentages were like four or five, six. It didn't seem right, emailed them back, I'm like, we need to see what's going on. This is. There's always variability, but it's too much variability. So I took that out because I want to be fair to Mills. So that is taken out, redacted from this. Once I have an update, I will re-put that back in and I will do an update on that if it changes anything at all. But I think we can get a general picture on this so far. So getting into it, it just kind of looks like a bunch, you know, mess of numbers. You can't really tell who's winning. So, and I just did total overall averages at the bottom, but that's neither here nor there. But to get into it and uh, to go ahead and pop up the other data part, a pivot that I did on here, I'm gonna throw it up now, bam. 
This is going to give you condensed data. Going all the way to the left, you see Athena at the top, Mills at the bottom. These are going to be averages. So I took the average of everything to see where we're at because it's a little bit easier doing that way. As you can see, we have highlighted flush or not flush because we want to know the difference at the far end, the totals. So starting with the flush first, you can tell the average of all total cannabinoid contents, Athena 1, 25% to 22%. Average of THC percentage, we have Athena winning again, 21% over 18%. Average uh, of total terpene percentage, Mills won on this one, 3% to Athena's 2%. Now going into the non-flush side, we have average total cannabinoid content. Athena won again, 24 to 22%. Average total THC content, Athena once again, 20 to 19%, a little bit less than the flush. And average of total terpenes on this one, once again, Mills won. So Mills only taking the terpenes, it is partial organic, I kind of expected that to be honest. Now, if you look at just the total overall averages, you see where, uh, you know, added up flush and non-flush is what you see on the far right. Total average of total cannabinoids, so this is flush and non-flush, 24 over 22, THC 21 over 19, both of those go to Athena. You know, even, you know and this is averaging both the flush and non-flush, so this is everything. That's... And then total terpenes, still Mills won that, of course. So, but Athena took the cake. Now there isn't a huge difference in a lot of these, only by a couple percent. If you're looking at the total, considering flush and non-flush, it's only a 2% difference, right? So there is some variability because this doesn't have water content. Um, I didn't realize that the center did not standard put that in, so that's on me. But they, that could vary because if you have a little bit higher moisture content than the other, it could affect your percentages slightly. So half percent to 1%, I'd say is probably, you know, it would be within the realm of reason, right? So, but even taking that out, they still won by, you know, 2% 2, 2 on a total overall. So it's definitely leading in Athena's favor. Now where this becomes even a bigger deal is now when it comes to weight, and I haven't covered this yet. Weight, oh, before I cover that, if you notice, heavy metals, non-detectable. Flush, no flush, doesn't matter. It's non-detectable across the board. So both, both, both these did great. They're very comparable. Athena killed it in the weight though. Athena beat Mills. It had a total of 8.5% higher yield. So even if their numbers were identical, an 8.5% yield to any grower is going to be fantastic. Now, if you're a company, a cultivation, that's huge, which is ama it's, it's surprising. It amazes me, right? Because if you guys remember, looking at the grows, we had mills went crazy with the nitrogen, the high nitrogen around through transition. It was much bigger, bulkier. I expected that to actually have better yield, and it was the opposite. I think it was just more dense, had buds more consistent all the way down. So I think it took the cake. Now, keep this in mind, this is very specific to a cocoa only grow. I think if this was in a soil or like an amended cocoa, you know, where it has other things inside of it, such as worm castings or peat moss or whatever else, you know, where it's more organic kind of thing and you're feeding the microbes, I do think mills would have an advantage there. So keep in mind that, you know, stipulations in with these cultivars in a cocoa only, Athena takes it. And I think Athena would take it in a rock wool. I think when it comes to soil, I think that's where mills has a little bit of a better chance because they are partial organic. They're a blend. Now, Going to flush to non-flush. Now the numbers that you see here, it is slightly in favor of flushing, but by like a percent. So it's very, very small. I think it's not substantial enough to say that one's better than the other, but be that as it is, if they are the same and there's really no difference, or maybe even slightly in favor of flushing, I mean, it's really hard to tell with 1% of the variables, but I will most likely flush going forward, and I have not in years, in years and years and years, I just tapered down. But the way I see it is if I can get the same exact results, if not a little bit better, at least in this one trial, right? This is a sample size of one, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. If it's this, even if it was exactly identical, I would start flushing simply because it saves me one week of nutrients. One week of nutrients, depending, you know, three, four times a year, plus the size of the growth, that's gonna be hundreds of dollars of savings for me. So I will probably start flushing from here on out for the last week, simply because I do not see any loss in yield. I do not see any reason whatsoever not to, and if it saves me money, then that's a reason to do it. So going over that, that's everything. Athena took the cake, they win. I mean, there's really no getting around it. I mean, they got the better terpenes, but it's such a small number of that, it's negligible. So we finally have it after all the long awaiting. Uh, once again, Guys, stay tuned to the next one because we're going to take these numbers and we're going to put it up next against the last grows numbers and the percentages and everything we got there with the intense PPFD. You know, does 
quantity versus potency make a difference? If you get high quantity, does that mean low potency? Within the same cultivar, obviously different strains have you know different genetics going on, but if you have the same genetics and you increase lighting, does that mean you get, oh, you got high yield, but you're gonna lose out on potency? Or does it not matter? Or do they both go up? Or you know what's the difference? And we're gonna get into that and we have some data to back it up. It's, I think it's gonna be very interesting. So it's gonna change the way I, I do things going forward. And now I say higher on the end. I'm not comparing you know, a 700 PPFD to higher. So this really only gonna to apply to someone who runs CO2 uh, or at least has a higher rich CO2 area, you know, not just you know, ambient 400 or 420 or whatever it is. But that's it, I'll end it here. Don't wanna go on too long. You guys stay tuned for that next one. These are the results, I hope you guys like it. If you do have any questions or anything I didn't cover because there's a lot of information, please drop it below, I'll do my best to answer it. If you wanna see these once again, I will have it uploaded to my Instagram so you guys can see all the labs, the full details, everything, so that way you know I'm not faking the funk and uh, you know I didn't use SKU numbers or anything like that just so you guys can trust me. But you know, at that, I'll just end it here. So uh, peace out YouTube. As always guys, have a great one, man. See, I'm in love with Mary Jane. I'm gonna make her.